Good afternoon, smoke-free homes and zones, Kirsty speaking. Passive smoking is a major health issue that affects many people. In my job as a smoke-free homes and zones coordinator, I help people who live with smokers to understand the dangers of passive smoking and how they can avoid it. I support smokers who are not yet ready to stop smoking to adjust their behaviour to avoid harming other people. I also offer advice and support to people who'd like to stop smoking. Passive smoking is what happens when someone other than the smoker inhales cigarette smoke. Only 15% of the smoke that comes out of a cigarette is actually inhaled by the smoker themselves. The rest of that smoke then goes into the surrounding air and can be breathed in by other people. That's what's referred to as second-hand smoke. Secondhand smoke is extremely dangerous because of the small particle size of the smoke. These small particles can penetrate very deeply into the lungs. The most effective thing that you can do to avoid passive smoking is to stop smoking yourself. That's the best way to protect your friends and family and those people around about you. If you are a smoker and you haven't yet managed to quit, the next best thing you can do is to make your home and your car smoke free. And what this would mean would be that you would go outside to smoke and you would ask any friends and family who come to visit to do the same. I hear you're looking for more information about passive smoking. Uh -huh. Yeah. But I was going to ask if we get friends round at the weekend and they're all smokers, what is the best that I can do for them not to smoke in the house? Some of the more practical things that you can do around the home to ensure that it stays smoke free are putting up a sign at the front door to state that it is a smoke free home and that then avoids having that conversation with them because they, they see straight away that if they do want to smoke they'll need to go outside. You're in an ideal situation in this house because you've got the garden. What I would say is that if you've got friends that are going outside, just ask them to step that wee bit further away from the door because right. if they're standing in the doorway and it's a windy night, then you know it's the just wind's just going to back blow, in, yeah. yeah, it'll just blow yeah. the smoke straight back in. If for some reason you're unable to go outside to smoke, the next best thing you can do is identify a room in the home that isn't used by children and use that as a designated smoking room. When you or other people are smoking in that room, you should make sure that the doors close to the rest of the house and also make sure that there's a window open and it's well ventilated. It is important to remember though that the chemicals produced by smoking linger for a lot longer than the visible smoke can be seen. Some of the dangerous chemicals that are found in cigarette smoke are carbon monoxide, which comes from car exhausts, acetone, ammonia, arsenic, which is found in rat poison, formaldehyde, benzene, butane, hydrogen cyanide, which was used in the gas chambers, nitrogen oxides, and there are hydrogen sulfides, which irritate airways. I was wanting to ask if, what if one of my friends come round and they ask if it's okay to light up in my home? Okay, well, the thing to remember there is it's, it's your house, so don't be afraid to say, actually, would you mind going outside because the house is smoke-free? Right. Yeah. As non-smokers yourselves, one of the most effective things that you can do to avoid passive smoke is speaking to your friends and family who are smokers about their own smoking behaviour and maybe yeah. asking if they're thinking about stopping smoking themselves. There's a number of health risks that are associated with being exposed to passive smoking. A non-smoker who lives with a smoker is 25% more likely to have heart disease than they would be had they lived with a non-smoker. They're 24% more likely to have lung cancer. Overall, their mortality rate is increased by 15% because they live with a smoker. They're at increased risk of suffering from respiratory tract conditions such as bronchitis and pneumonia. And if they have asthma, their asthma is likely to be exacerbated by the secondhand smoke. Being aware of the effect of passive smoking on other people is a strong motivating factor for smokers who are looking to stop. Many parents and grandparents actually cite this as being one of the main reasons that they want to give up smoking. And this has helped a lot of people already in Scotland to give up. I've actually had Callum looking after him during the day since he was six months old. When he was a baby in the pram, it wasn't so bad because he was outside all the time he wasn't in and I was smoking in the house. I was stupid because I thought if I came through to the kitchen or came out here to have a cigarette um, and Callum was through in the living room, that it, it wasn't getting near him, which is not true because if you're smoking in your house, it's there. I stopped smoking because really for my dog more than anything else, I mean, we'd be sitting on the settee and he'd be nice and curried in beside me. 
And as soon as I lit up a cigarette, off he'd go, down, give me a dirty look and go to the other side of the room. And it made me really think about how it was having an effect on him. And I thought, well, even f although it'd be good for me, for myself to stop, it'd be really good for him as well. It's not fair on him. He didn't have a choice in my smoke. And, you know, it just wasn't right at all. The health risks for babies and children from passive smoking are actually even higher than they are for adults. Children and babies are more vulnerable to the effects of passive smoking. They have smaller airways than adults do and breathe more quickly. Therefore, if there is any secondhand smoke in the air, they breathe proportionately more of it than an adult would. For example, a baby who's born to parents who are both smokers is almost four times more likely to die from cot death or sudden infant death syndrome. Children who live in a home with smokers are also more likely to contract respiratory conditions such as pneumonia, bronchitis and croup. They're more likely to suffer from middle ear infections which can lead to permanent hearing impairment and if they do have asthma, their asthma is likely to be made worse by the fact that they're exposed to secondhand smoke. Children spend quite a lot of time on the ground when they're playing and toxic chemicals from the smoke can stick to carpets and to sofas and, cu and curtains. And these toxic particles can actually be ingested by the child through hand-to-mouth contact. When John was first born, I made the effort to do you know, actually no smoke in front of him and, and go outside to smoke and one thing or another. Um, but, you know, as, as I got older and, and he was able to leave the room, I got lazier and, you know, I was smoking in front of him like, and, it, and, you know, there's scientific evidence to prove that it's no good for them, but you, know, you don't really think of these things you know, at the time. Around 20% of 11-year-olds are exposed to second-hand smoke in their own home. There's evidence to suggest that these children are more likely to become smokers themselves because they've grown up in a home with smoke around them and believe that smoking is the norm. When a pregnant woman is exposed to second-hand smoke, the second-hand smoke enters the circulation of the baby as well. This can have a number of effects. The baby can have behavioural and developmental problems during childhood. They can be more likely to contract lung cancer and heart disease in later life. For the pregnant women, the risks of miscarriage, stillbirth or premature birth are increased, as are the risks of having a baby with a low birth weight. Since the smoking ban was brought in in public places, the level of exposure to passive smoking has dropped dramatically. However, the legislation doesn't cover people's homes and cars, and that's the reason why these are now the places where people are most at risk of exposure to passive smoke. Because cars are such small, confined spaces, levels of smoke can become very high very quickly. For that reason, it's important never to smoke when there's anyone else in the car with you, and particularly children. If you're going on a long journey and you don't think you can manage without a cigarette, the best thing you can do is to have a break, have a smoke outside and then continue with your journey.